closed captioning for Education Matters is sponsored by Will Lou Gray Opportunity School, Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare, and Aiken Regional Medical Centers. Good morning! Who is this new kid on the block? Well, inside of Education Matters today, you'll find out because he is ready to serve you. Education Matters is next. Good morning and welcome inside of Education Matters. My name is Donna Moore Westby, your host of Education Matters, where learning is living. Let me first of all start off the day by saying Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers in this country, in our area. What an awesome privilege and a blessing it is to be a mother. And to you, we have these beautiful flowers. You can't physically take them with you, but just know that you are in our thoughts and prayers today, mothers. You have an awesome job, and we certainly thank you for the job you do. And of course, you see this dapper gentleman sitting next to me today. He is my guest. And some of you may be wondering, well, who is this man? He is Mr. Vance Reynolds. He is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Aiken Regional Medical Centers. Brand new to the area, and he's gonna be with me the entire hour. How you feeling over there? I'm doing wonderful, good morning and a happy Mother's Day to you oh, also. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> You're so kind. I'm really excited. My son's been home for the weekend and I get to see all of my kids and it's, it's just been a blessing. So that we're gonna have a great day today. Yes, we're talking about being a servant today so you're not going to want to miss today's broadcast and we thank you so much for being with us today mr vance reynolds of course we'd like to thank all of the sponsors of aiken Re uh, of aiken regional medical center well that too <laughs> <laughs> but of education matters and I, I had on my mind to say that i'm very excited that aiken regional as of this morning, is a new sponsor uh, of Education Matters. Well, so we got a clap and ring the bell and all of that. <laughs> so thanks to Aiken Regional. Also, our corporate sponsors, Howell Printing out of Aiken, South Carolina, your full service printer, offering graphic design services. Also, Security Federal Bank. There is certainly a Security Federal Bank near you. Will Lou Gray Opportunity School, South Carolina's premier alternative education school for children ages 16 to 19. Also, Westby's Products and Services, creator of Don Seasoning Delight, all-purpose seasoning and marinade. Also, Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare. Margaret's Garden is officially open, and I'm telling you, you must go by and see that gorgeous facility. They're doing wonderful things to assist those who need those services in our area. So go by and check out Margaret's Garden. Also the University of South Carolina in Aiken, always providing awesome educational services for our students, traditional and non-traditional. Also Access Chiropractic, where the chiropractor is Dr. Blair Bradley. And as I said earlier, of course, Aiken Regional Medical Centers. We're very excited about them coming aboard and you heard from them on last week as we talked about uh, stroke awareness. So thanks to all of our corporate sponsors and then to those individuals we call Friends of Education Matters, Bill and Joy Bradley of Aiken, Sharon White of Aiken, Isaac and Betty Rucker, my parents of Aiken, and finally Henry and Nancy Craig also of Aiken. Now, if you're interested in becoming a part of our sponsorship family, you'll get those details throughout today's broadcast. So thanks again to all of you. Okay, moving on to this week's chalkboard reminder. And Mr. Vance Reynolds, this chalkboard reminder is actually the same as last week. And this will not be a surprise to you. May is Stroke Awareness Month. Yes, it is. Please 
Pay attention to your body language. Your body is telling you things, okay? Pay attention, know your risks for stroke, and take steps to remove those risk factors. We talked about some of that on last week's broadcast. Also, please get a checkup today, and I'm sure our Aiken Regional Medical Center CEO will give us some sound advice in today's broadcast, okay? Mr. Vance Reynolds, CEO of Aiken Regional Medical Centers, any idea what that sound means? No, what does it mean? <laughs> well, you know what? At least you were honest and said no. <laughs> you know, I've had some people guess and just be dead wrong. But, <laughs> but that sound means it's word of the week time inside of the broadcast. Every week we do provide a brand new word of the week and we do that to help prepare our young people for their standardized exams but also for us adults so that we can continue to learn and grow. How's that? That sounds great. All right. We all need to. Yes we do. Well this week's word of the week is, here it is, relentless. Mm -hmm, you've heard it before. Relentless. You heard it before Matt? Matt is nodding. Give me the thumbs, thumbs up. Relentless is an adjective and it means unyielding or pitiless. It also means steady and persistent or unremitting. Here is this week's sentence. Madeline can be pretty relentless when it comes to her political views. Mm -mm. She's not backing down. Steady as she goes, okay? Relentless is this week's word of the week. Have fun with it, practice it. Make sure you go to my website for a continuous list of our words of the week. And uh, Mr. Vance Reynolds, see that website right there on the screen? Yes. Read that out to our guests today, it our is viewers. It is dot com. Very good, you're about ready to take my job. <laughs> edmat.com and on that website you'll see just a uh, plethora of articles, websites you can use, also our feature video which is uh, a previous segment of Education Matters so make sure you go and check that out okay now moving on to this week's grammar lesson of the week and here goes now an indefinite pronoun refers to a person, place, or thing in a more general way than a personal pronoun does, okay? Personal pronoun being he or she or your. If the indefinite pronoun is singular, it takes a singular verb, all right? If it is plural, it takes a plural verb. Some indefinite pronouns may take either a singular or plural verb depending on the context of the sentence. Now here's a little bit more. Singular indefinite pronouns are anybody, another, anyone, anything, each, either, everybody, everyone, everything, much, neither, nobody, no one, nothing, one, somebody, someone, something. Now, why is that important for you to know? Well, it helps you with your subject and verb agreement. These indefinite pronouns that I just listed require the singular form of the verb. Here are some examples. Everybody has a chance to win the contest, all right? If you're unsure, put in a singular um, pronoun such as he has, he has, she has has and that lets you know the correct form of the verb okay next example nobody likes to lose all right nobody requires the singular form of the verb like which is likes has an s on it last example either of the songs seems perfect for the party either a singular indefinite pronoun requiring the singular form of the verb seem. All right, next week we'll pick up on the plural indefinite pronouns, but that is your 
grammar lesson of the week. Did you learn anything, Mr. Vance? I actually always helps to be refreshed. All right, very good. That's right, because inside of Education Matters, learning is living, okay? Don't you go anywhere. After these important announcements, we'll come back and introduce you to the brand new CEO of Aiken Regional Medical Centers. You're inside of Education Matters. We'll be right back. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. It's got nothing to do with fairness. Bam, your whole world changes in an instant. And you never see it coming. That's what happened to me. The day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast. You have the best ability to reverse the neurological deficit from the stroke if you give this clot buster within three hours. And the problem is, of course, we wind up coming after that three hour window, which is unfortunate because they had an opportunity to reverse partially or maybe a majority of the stroke deficits that they have had they come in that window of three hours. Time is critical, just like in a heart attack. Experience real personal health care only at Aiken Regional. Welcome back inside of the broadcast. You're watching Education Matters with me, Donna Moore Wesby, where learning is living. Today inside of the broadcast, I'm particularly happy because we have a gentleman who is kind of new to the Central Savannah River area as my guest today, and his name is Mr. Vance Reynolds. He is the brand spanking new kind of brand spanking new, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Aiken Regional Medical Centers. And he's here with us today. Welcome again inside of the broadcast. Oh, thank you, I'm delighted to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. You know, I did something with you that I have not done uh, the entire year that I've been on WRDW, and that is to uh, have a guest be with me during the what we call the A Block of the broadcast and, and helping me get the word of the week out and the, the uh, grammar lesson of the week. So you're pretty special. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Speaking of special, there are a lot of special things about you that I would like for our viewers to get to know. You know, we have viewers, some awesome viewers on WRDW coming from, of course, the Aiken Augusta area, Edgefield, Lexington, um, even all the way in McCormick and Augusta, Richmond County, Columbia County, and certainly with our broadcast also uh, being on YouTube, people are watching you from all over the country. And today we want them to get to know you. So Mr. Vance Reynolds, I wanna start off, I know you've got this big, awesome task of being the CEO of Aiken Regional, but tell us a little bit about your background and how you grew up. Well, thank you. Um, so Donna, I basically, I'm from Texas. Okay. I was born in Texas, Ooh. born and raised. And um, when I was um, a child, most people think, um, I get asked all the time, where am I from? Uh huh. Because of that accent. Because of my that, accent. Or what they think is an accent. And everybody tells me, <laughs> you're not from Texas, where you're from. Uh -huh. And it's so funny because people guess foreign countries, Louisiana, up north, it's, you know, it's really funny. Uh huh. But the, the reality is um, when I had, when I was two, mm -hmm. I had a form of cancer mm. um, and I lost all my senses. Um, wow. And so it's actually a speech impediment. Okay. Um, but I was blessed. Um, the, I would say the good Lord had plans for me. Amen. And um, <laughs> he allowed me to recover all of my senses mm -hmm. um, between the time I was three and six years old. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I was able to recover my hearing probably around five, five and a half, but I had already went through that time that is critical to learn to speak. Okay. And so it's really an accent. <laughs> And that is something that's, it, it's, it, I imagine it ends up being quite um, an icebreaker or a discussion starter to help people understand really who Vance Reynolds is. So talk to us more about your upbringing that led you into the medical field. Well, so <clears throat> obviously when you start off with um, the, the background that I have with, with the form of cancer, um, you know, healthcare is always there, but in, in all honesty, I was just a typical teenage kid in, in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. you, you have to play football in Texas. That's, that, <laughs> you that's just what, have to do that's it. That's what huh? you do. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, um, my parents went through a divorce. I had a tough life kind of growing up. Um, but I do have two parents that love me and, and mm -hmm. two parents that um, always made sure we was at church. And um, so, we was able to, um, I was able to, to come to the Lord at, at an early age. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe the Lord always had his hand on me. I think that, you know, <clears throat> sometimes I would get out of line, but the, <laughs> his grace is, is, is wonderful. It's and I always had a way yes. to bring me back. And um, so went off to college um, and I met my wonderful wife. <laughs> um, Paula Reynolds. Hi, Miss um, Paula. She's, she's probably watching. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Happy Mother's Day, too. Yes, very good. You are so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have six kids, so Woo! she's had a, a tough job. My Lord, God bless you, girl. <laughs> but um, she she's really the glue of our family. Mm -hmm. She really is. And um, we got married when we was 19, kind of young. I wouldn't advise that to everybody, but... Um, <laughs> I think if the Lord's in anything, it's always going to work. Yes. yes. And um, so um, we began a life. I got my, um, I'm actually a, a CPA, okay. a certified um, public accountant, um, licensed in Texas. And that's what I, my degree was in accounting. And so after I graduated, I went to work for a um, accounting firm mm -hmm. and I did audits on hospitals. My. <laughs> so, um, you know, it just kind of one thing led to another. Um, I went ahead and got my MBA, my Master's of Business um, degree, and um, started working as a uh, assistant CFO at a hospital, mm -hmm. and then just went to a CFO. And then about uh, 12 years ago, um, I jumped over to the administration side, and um, has been a CEO since. And I'm telling you, 20 plus years of experience in the healthcare industry and more than 10 years as a CEO, that says quite a bit about your leadership skills. And I understand you call yourself an untraditional leader. Why? Well, you know, uh, again, kind of going, going back to, to growing up, I have two brothers mm -hmm. um, and um, wonderful brothers. Um, one of them, though, is a preacher, mm -hmm. <laughs> and my family loves to debate. Uh, I don't know if yours do, but my we love to debate, and it's always funny because when we get together, uh, me and my brother talk about our ministries. Because mm -hmm. I look at my job as really as a ministry. I yes. think we all have a ministry. Yes. Um, and I joke with him because I said, Brad, you only see your people twice a week, uh -huh. Sundays and Wednesdays. I see my people almost every day. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing I would kind of always joke about is that, you know, as a preacher, everybody expects him to be a God-fearing, outstanding man. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I, I think there's a lot of people in, in, in the communities who expect CEOs and, and sales people mm -hmm. not to always be honest, You're not exactly to always right. be ethical. Yes. And so, you know, I always joke with him that I even have a, a, a bigger stage because people expect me to, to do wrong That's versus right. expecting him to do right. <laughs> and, and so it, it is a bigger ministry 
to, to try to lead from a Christian servant standpoint. And I think that in, in, in this particular industry, in the healthcare industry, I would venture to say that more people are more concerned about the morals and the ethics, at least I am, of leaders than I am whether or not they're the best fiscally responsible. We want that too, but when we're talking about health care and the care of ourselves and the care of our loved ones, it definitely gives me great comfort to hear you talk about your convictions and the way you were raised and how you've even characterized yourself as a servant leader. For those who are unfamiliar with that terminology, explain that to us. Well, Donna, to me, a servant leader is one who always puts his employees first. Mm. Um, you know, I, I believe in, in good quality health care, but at the end of the day, I, as the CEO, I'm not a nurse. Mm -hmm. I'm not a physician. I'm not the one actually giving the care. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the wonderful physicians and the great nurses that give the care. But my aspect, and I've learned, is that human nature is if I'm happy, if I'm content in my job, mm -hmm. if I'm satisfied in my job, I'm going to do a better job for the customer. Yeah. yeah. And in this case, is health care. So if the employee is content and is um, passionate about their job, mm -hmm. they're going to give better service to the patient. That's right. They don't, they don't have compassion for the patient. Yes, yes. And then they're going to also be the biggest advocate for that place of employment. And right. specifically in this discussion, Aiken Regional Medical Centers. So, so part of being a servant leader, uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm is one, you never ask an employee to do something you wouldn't do. Mm. Um, you, you know, they, they may, uh, I think, a TV show out of it, Undercover Boss, where yes. the boss goes up. <laughs> but it shouldn't be undercover. Uh -huh. the, the boss should go and do those jobs every once in a while so that he understands the employees, he understands their frustrations, mm -hmm. and he can get a sense of really what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, plus, I believe that we all want to be connected. Yeah. The employees want to feel connected. That's right. Um, they don't want to feel like they're just working for the guy upstairs. <laughs> There's only one person upstairs. <laughs> and, and, and the rest of us are truly servants. Yes. The rest of us are truly, um, and my job, because I don't literally lay hands on, on our patients, mm -hmm. and you would probably would not want me to, <laughs> you know, my job is to make sure that our employees have the best environment to work in, mm -hmm. work on. They have the equipment that they need, that there's a safe environment, that there's a, a joyful environment. Mm -hmm. um, because again, I believe that the more satisfied an employee is, the more satisfied the patient will be when they come to the hospital. And I believe that that is so phenomenal because as you stated, uh, and, and the corporate world, in the world of senior management, it always seems as if the bottom, it's always about that bottom line, that that is what is the number one priority. But you came into Aiken Regional and perhaps some of your previous CEO positions focusing on employees. So what has the first uh, few you know, months been like for you at Aiken Regional? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I think, um, Donna, we have tremendous employees at the facility mm -hmm. and, and we have tremendous physicians at the facility. Mm -hmm. I think um, we are blessed to have that. Um, I, I think, though, that everybody wants a, a direction, wants something to achieve, mm -hmm. wants something more. And, and, I, and I've found that most of our employees are up to the challenge. Um, you know, my challenge for our employees is to give the best care. Um, you know, quality care isn't just about having the best outcomes, which mm -hmm. obviously is very important. Right, right. But quality care is also about patients feeling that you truly cared about them. Right. And, you know, I, I think in every organization, um, we still have some room to improve. Mm 
Um, but I believe that we will get there and you know I believe that our employees want to get there and part of it again going back to, to servant leadership is communicating with the employees and good and bad yeah you know you know to it's funny to serve that doesn't mean that you always please somebody mm -hmm. um, that's very true you know just like a lot well, of people just want to be heard right you know they may know that you can't fix the situation we may know that it, uh, um, uh, death could be an inevitable outcome but at least if we feel and I'm including myself in this because you know I utilize healthcare facilities is that someone has taken the time to acknowledge my presence acknowledge the feelings that I have um, and then you know are making whatever steps that are feasible and within reason to take care of those needs and for those visiting healthcare facilities, specifically hospitals, it starts from the first time you either make a phone call or visit, you know, that emergency room, that first interaction with an employee, you know, gives you that most, I believe, that most important impression. It does. Yeah, it yeah. Does. And in going along with what you've been saying about your approach, your approach to being a servant leader, uh, you are not just talking the talk, but you are also walking the walk. Share with us the overall mission and vision uh, that you are putting forward, or maybe perhaps continuing for Aiken Regional. Right, well, and I appreciate that. You know, our, our mission is um, that we provide quality health care to the point that patients recommend us to their family and friends. Mm -hmm that um, physicians prefer to use our facility than other facilities, mm -hmm. that employees are proud of and excited about working, and that we support the community needs. You know, healthcare is more than just being a hospital for the community. We need to be there for the community. Right. Um, and you know, the aspect is we want a, a service environment, a service excellence that everyone feels that they are on a gift and that we want to demonstrate professionalism and excellence in everything we do. And as you said, that even means how we communicate and treat patients right. and their family members. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, now, your approach, as you've, you've stated, you come in, you don't necessarily make changes right away. What do you believe are the key components of having a successful community hospital because that is essentially what Aiken Regional is. Yes, you know, I, Donna, I would say that there's multiple um, aspects to that question. Okay. Um, kind of let me start by saying that we need to um, provide the best service to the community mm -hmm. um, so that the community knows that when they come to the hospital that they would get the same level of care no matter where else they could have went. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, that starts with the ER. Um, the ER is the front door to the hospital. The emergency room. The emergency mm -hmm. room is the front door of the hospital. Um, you know, you, you typically have, we do about 55,000, so for 2014 we did 55,000 visits through the ER. Woo and we only did 13,000 um, admissions. So if you just kind of look at the number, and actually 65% ER of your admissions come from the ER, so 65% of that 13,000 is really from the ER. Mm. And so patient's perspective is from that ER, and so we have to make sure that we are attentive mm -hmm. to the patients and the family members coming in through the front door. Right. Um, but the other thing is to create an um, in, environment in the hospital, go back to the, the patient, to the employee satisfaction, mm -hmm. is that we have to create a place where the employees are proud of and they want to be there. Because again, if the employees have that feeling, they're going to tell everybody where to come. They're going to tell their family members where to come. And, and typically they would do that 
because they walk there, mm -hmm. but when they don't do it, it's because they're upset with the boss or mm -hmm. they're upset with their d director. Right. And so we have to create a environment that is an open environment that we are able to respectfully and professionally challenge each other to mm -hmm. make sure at the end of the day, the patient receives the best care. That's right. But then also we have a job for the community. Yes, and the, I want you to hold it right there okay. because it's that community uh, relationship, that relationship building that I've heard you talk about that you believe in and you're also uh, doing whatever you can to instill that in your employees and, uh, and even in your own family. So we want you to talk about that a little bit more. We're going to hear from our sponsors now, of course, Aiken Regional being one of those sponsors. Don't you go anywhere. Happy Mother's Day. You're inside of Education Matters. We'll be right back. I'm Michael Dean Perry. I grew up in Aiken, and it's still home for me. I only wish Aiken Regional's ER was nearby when I played for the NFL. With all the bumps, bruises, sprains and strains, and ER just got easier. You can request a time online for things like earaches, coughs, and colds. There he is! To find out more, just go to AikenRegional.com. The Will Blue Gray Opportunity School has been serving the beautiful Midlands of South Carolina since 1921. Our mission has evolved over the years and we now specialize in helping young people move past their obstacles in order to achieve success. We give students opportunities to lead, to develop social skills, to become active in their communities and to taste success. Don't settle for less than the absolute best for your life. Contact us today to take the next step in your journey towards success. Why go to college anywhere else? For the past four years, U.S. News & World Report has named University of South Carolina Aiken the number one top public comprehensive college in the South. You can attend one of the best universities in the nation with more than 49 majors in academic programs, nationally ranked athletics, and great student life. With small classes, the faculty and staff are focused on your success. USC Aiken, the university focused on you. Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare is coming soon to serve the community of Aiken. We are dedicated to enhancing the emotional, mental, and physical well-being of our clients, allowing seniors to remain in the community as long as possible. A daily fitness plan, games, weekly outings, fine dining, and discussion groups are just a few of the services we offer to keep your loved one active and engaged. Margaret's Garden, we meet you where you are. Weekends are for resting, relaxing, and recharging your batteries. A good weekend can also give you the time to catch up on business you couldn't get to during the week. For Security Federal Bank customers, that means banking business. What does seven-day banking mean to your banker? More importantly, what does it mean to you? At Security Federal Bank, being open seven days a week means just that. That's why our Southside branch on Whiskey Road in front of Target is open for business every day, even Saturday and Sunday. We're proud to be the only bank to be open seven days a week in Aiken County. If we were you, we'd bank with us. When it comes to grilling, I'm the man. Using Don seasoning the light, I'm the grill master. My seasoning is available at Prober, Bilo, Food Line, Reeds, and Harvest. Look for it on display in the meat department. Also visit seasoningdelight.com for information and recipes. Don seasoning the light, it's so good. Don seasoning the light is so good. If you are interested in becoming an individual or corporate sponsor of Education Matters, contact Donna Moore Wesby at 803-507-6793 or email at DonnaWesby at AOL.com. Welcome back inside of Education Matters. My name is Donna Moore Wesby, your host of Education Matters, where learning is living. If you have to rush off to worship service, we want to say 
Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, those of you who have children, those of you who may not have birthed children, but you've been raising them all of your life. Happy Mother's Day to you as well, and also to those of you who are expecting. I want to also say Happy uh, Mother's Day to my mother, and also Happy Birthday. She just celebrated a birthday on yesterday, May 9th, so we have lots to celebrate in our family and of course today inside of education matters we're giving you an opportunity to meet that guy there we go that guy he's right here in the studio his name is Vance Reynolds and he is the new chief executive officer of Aiken Regional Medical Centers and he's here visiting with us today I've really enjoyed you so far welcome back well thank you All I've right. enjoyed it well you've been great six kids you're from Texas, you're here in South Carolina now. What's South Carolina been like for you? It is <laughs> wonderful. The people here are, are so nice. Um, you, this is actually our second time in South Carolina. Okay, okay. Um, about six, seven years ago, we lived up in Chirac, uh -huh. which is um, in the PD area of, of South Carolina. Okay. And actually, that is um, of our six kids. We have adopted two kids, oh, and yeah. the, we actually, the two that we adopted, Jeremiah and Kia, um, <laughs> was from the South Carolina DHEC system. Okay. So South Carolina means a lot to us. I'm telling you, and when the, you know, you look at your, your family, your blended family, um, just that you had, you come from the, having a, what some may consider a disability, and you have risen to the ranks of being the chief executive officer of a hospital, you know, that's a message in itself, particularly to those who may have a disability, that they can do anything they want to do. And I, I just, I love the fact, that's why I wanted people to get to know you and uh, what you stand for. Uh, when we're talking about healthcare and taking care of ourselves and our loved ones, and our friends, we want to know that there are hospitals, there are facilities that will put the customers first, the patients first, and you're trying to ensure that at Aiken Regional. Yes, and you know, right before the commercial, you was asking me about, um, you know, what what should we do as far as the community standpoint? Mm -hmm. And I just want to touch on that, if Please that's okay. Do. Yes. You know, the hospital already does a wonderful job as far as having events like the annual expo event that was at um, USC Aiken um, mm -hmm. last weekend. Um, there's also a, a Cancer Survivors Day that we do in, in November, mm -hmm. um, and also a Christmas at the Lake event um, that we do with the, the Salvation Army in December. But I think it's more than just quote, the hospital doing stuff for people. Mm -hmm. I think it's really an aspect that we have to choose, and our message has to be that we all want to serve people. And, and that's the message I'm trying to get across to our wonderful employees at the hospital. It's, it's an ad attitude of serving, not just while you're working, but mm -hmm. just like you do with this with this program, mm -hmm. you, you started this program to help others. Right. And I think we all are called to, to help others. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I'm in a wonderful industry that we get to help others at, at the hospital, but I think we should step outside and do things for the local community, do things for the church. Right. Um, there's a lot of kids that are in need, and, and we can yes. all give some. Yes, and when the, the CEO of a hospital takes his time to give back to the community, encourages employees to take part in that as well, and even to some degree, you know, and, and uh, um, expecting even the staff to take part. I believe we all benefit in that because need knows no income level. It knows, you know, it's not a discrimina discriminator in other words. So. While we may be giving to the United Way thinking we're helping others, it might be us who's needing the United Way services tomorrow. So we're, we all benefit when we give. My mom told me a long time ago, you cannot give the Lord. Ooh, I love it. I'm gonna read my bell on that. 
You know, one of the things that you mentioned going back to the uh, mission and vision of Aiken Regional was the importance of relationship building even with the physicians. Talk a little bit more about that because we all, you know, especially for a community hospital, we want to know that there are physicians who are qualified, who are equipped, who are knowledgeable, but also compassionate as well. Right. I would have to tell you, I was very impressed when I got here um, three to four months ago mm -hmm. and, and saw the, the physicians and, and the specialties that um, Aiken Regional has. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, um, for a community hospital, Aiken Regional offers the gambit of all services. Mm -hmm. uh, we have open heart surgery, we have neurosurgery, and then everything in between. Um, we deliver babies. We delivered about <laughs> 1,200 um, last year. We actually did about um, close to 5,000 surgical procedures. Um, and so, wow. you know, we have the um, gastroenterology, we have general surgeons, we have the cardiologists, the interventional cardiologists, the CV surgeons, the neurologists, um, talking about stroke and, mm -hmm. and, and the neurosurgeon. So, you know, but it's critical that, you know, the, the community understands that we all are a full service provider. Um, and for all your emergency needs, we have the specialist at our facility to take care of you. Mm -hmm. and, and then what's even more amazing is that we do have a behavioral health program. Yes, yes. And, you know, that is located on the campus. It's right behind the hospital. And that's Aurora. Yes, it's a 62 bed love facility. It, love it, love it. Um, and it is, there are beds for um, adult, Gerasac, and adolescents. And, you know, we actually get patients all the way from Charleston up mm. to, to Greenville, um, down to, you know, past um, Augusta. Mm -hmm. um, it is a service that is really needed mm -hmm. and it is a service that is growing. Right. And um, it is very fortunate, I believe, that um, a community hospital offers such a, such a service to our community. Yes, yes. Uh, we've referred to the terminology community hospital uh, several times within this broadcast, but there's also a difference between a for-profit hospital and a not-for-profit. Explain the differences and how uh, the, the, um, it benefits our area. Okay, well, you know, there is, it's always fun to, to have the question of, of for-profit versus a not-for-profit. Uh -huh. And, you know, I think in, there's really a, a misconception with, with most people as far as the hospital is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, the, the federal government um, passed a law years ago called EMTALA, which is an emergency medical act that mm -hmm. requires all hospitals to um, receive patients. Okay. And, and so when a patient comes through to your emergency room, all hospitals have to treat that patient um, and they have to get to the, where they stabilize the patient. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of people think that the, the not-for-profit systems or hospitals typically have more charity care than, than the for-profits. Okay. And it could be farther than the truth. Okay. Um, we had just last year alone approximately $66 million that we wrote off mm. um, to um, charity and indigent care. Um, so that, that is a way that we do give back to the community yeah, yeah. Um, because we do want to help and we acknowledge, I mean obviously there's paperwork to fill out but if you qualify we want to be able to give you that, that indigent care status and, mm -hmm. and help the community from that standpoint. And another way that the hospital uh, gives back to the community directly because um, Aiken Regional is a for-profit hospital but taxes it is it, you know is <laughs> it was funny i moved here in january uh -huh. and i guess i just missed there was a big vote or big election i think maybe in december mm -hmm. about the city increasing sales tax by one percent mm -hmm. um well as a for-profit hospital we actually pay sales tax and property taxes um, we pay 
about three million dollars um, and um, I think that's the right figure. Yeah, um, then we, we'll throw up the slide. Let's see. Um, yep, local impact, uh, property taxes, $994,000, sales taxes, $2,354,000. Yeah. So a little bit over yeah. $3 million mm -hmm. altogether. And it was funny because I've been talking to different people in the community and I just made this, asked this basic question. Mm -hmm. If we was not for profit, where would the city and the county make up that $3.4 million? Yes. So instead of a one cent sales tax that was passed, it would probably would have been a five or six cent sales mm. tax. I don't think that probably would have passed. <laughs> but Not um, in this area. <laughs> so, you know, I think that a lot of people don't realize that a for-profit healthcare institution actually benefits the community because typically most communities use sales tax money to help pay for the schools, mm -hmm. which is education matters. That's right, that's exactly right. So it all kind of just works together. And I think it's also pretty phenomenal that um, Aiken Regional is one of Aiken's largest employers. So, you know, going back to the point you made about um, not just customer satisfaction, but the relevance uh, and the vitality of employer employee satisfaction and how you know all of that um, plays an extremely vital role in the success of the hospital now I must bring this up because it was a huge issue in our uh, area and that is the changes that were taking place in our emergency room where do we currently stand with regard to the progress of our emergency room at Aiken Regional? Well, you know, again, I, I would say that coming here three months ago, um, back in January, you know, I've heard that there was a, um, that the hospital about three years ago switched ER groups. Mm -hmm. and, and that could be, you know, very upsetting to, to the employees, to the community. You get new doctors. Uh, how do people accept them? Mm -hmm. Do they trust them? Mm -hmm. And I think that the hospital did go through a period of time where um, during that transition that they was looking for a, a permanent group and how to use interim physicians. Mm -hmm. um, no one likes to use um, interim physicians uh, or part-time physicians. Mm -hmm. We want physicians who are part of the community. Right. Um, but we have had wonderful success as far as um, we recruited a new group. Um, all of the physicians are emergency board trained in ER. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in ER, um, in the emergency room, mm -hmm. a lot of physicians could be a family practice or a general surgeon or something who just went into the emergency room. All of our current physicians are actually board certified and trained in emergency medicine. Okay. And if you look at actually over the last, um, you know, just using this year alone for the last three to four months, our ER volume is up 11% over last year. Hmm. So our ER patient satisfaction is up. We still have room to improve. And you know, that is my constant goal. I'm down in the ER almost every day, mm -hmm. um, checking down there. Even on the weekends, I come in and round on the ER just to make sure everything's going and we treating everybody the best that, you know, the best that, that person deserves. We all deserve the best treatment. Now I wanna jump in there because, you know, I have been on both sides of the wheel, if you will, as an employer and an employee. And one of the things that is very difficult to break through is at, at a certain point of management, you may think that information is getting down throughout your organization. And it may get down, but it may not get down the way you intended it to. You know, there are different filters, levels of management, people adding their own uh, bits and pieces to the story. So where you may have a certain level of uh, expectation, how do you ensure that your messages, that your expectations, that you know your approaches to how you want this hospital to move forward is actually getting throughout the organization? 
Well, I would say, let me tell you some of the things I do and then also explain some of the results that we look at. Okay. Um, some of the things that, that I personally do is, um, is I actually meet with employees. I don't only have, you hear a lot of um, CEOs have town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, they have it once a year or twice a year and, you know, communicate with the employees, give the employees time to ask questions. But in all honesty, a lot of people won't ask questions mm -hmm. when they're in front of a big group. Right. And so you have to get down more on an individual level. Mm -hmm. And so not only do I do town hall meetings, but I actually round on my departments. And I round, so for example, last week, I went and met with the respiratory department okay. and the EKG department. Mm -hmm. And we just sat down and we had a, I guess you would call it a, a, a small forum, a wrap small session, a wrap session <laughs> and to, to understand what's going on. Uh -huh. and, and then, you know, what, what I call is round with a purpose. Mm, Don't just like walk that. around and say, yes. hey, how's it going today? That's right, just to say you met. Just no. to say you met, uh -huh. but you actually round with a purpose. You ask the same questions and you also connect with the employees. Yeah, and I think, uh, Mr. Vance, the way that you uh, and, and management in general really connects with employees is when you have an open door policy and you don't necessarily have to go through all these different levels uh, to get your voice voices heard. But then when that feedback is given and employees see changes, they see the results of their feedback without repercussions, then that is when you really connect. And I believe that if you continue to make those rounds, to let the employees know that they matter, then you know Aiken Regional will will definitely be uh, you know the top facility of, of choice in our area. Every one of the the things that I do is I give my phone number out to every employee. My Lord, have every, mercy! Every, How, what is Miss Paul? Is it Paula? <laughs> yes. How does Miss Paula feel about that? Your wife. Well. <laughs> She, <laughs> she understands because a gorgeous blonde. you know a hospital <laughs> is 24 7 and you know I can't be at the hospital 24 7 but my employees have to be able to get a hold of me they can't go through like you said go through all these hoops just to try to get a point across and so I do give my phone number out to everyone so that they will have a direct access to me and you talk about servant leadership this is Mr. Vance Reynolds, CEO of Aiken Regional. We'll be right back. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, Speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. The pace is often very fast. You have to know that others have your back and they have to know you have theirs. I spend more time at work than I do with my family sometimes, so these have to be people that I'm comfortable with. That's especially important in an emergency department. The patients really are our neighbors. It's very rewarding to be able to serve members of my community when they need it most. People you know, healthcare you trust. Aiken Regional Medical Centers. All right, it's been a great broadcast today. Closing us out is Mr. Vance Reynolds, the Chief Executive Officer of Aiken Regional Medical Centers. Not on the job quite a year yet, but already making some um, exciting changes. So, of course, we know that not every everything is peaches and cream, and as you stated earlier, there's some room for improvement. What messages would you have to those who've given Aiken Regional a try and may not have had the best experience? Don, I, I would tell you, and I would ask you, the, the audience, is to, to give us another chance. Um, you know, I, I still will tell you that everything's probably not perfect, um, but we are changing a culture and, and we are creating a culture of passion for the patient and compassion for the mm -hmm. patient. 
which is serving the patient. And one of the things that, you know, I would ask you, you or anybody else is, mm -hmm. if you feel uncomfortable or you've had a bad experience, one, call me um, or you can email me. I will love to call you and, and discuss and talk to you about your experience. Mm -hmm. But then also I'm willing to meet you at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if, if you come to the hospital, um, I also round on patients. So, um, you know, one of the things... Round on, that means you go and I go and visit. knock on the door okay. and see if I could come in and then talk to the patients about their current experience. Some of that hospital lingo, okay. <laughs> because I want to make sure that I, I, patients are having the best experience. And, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, all of us are humans and yeah. probably some of us have bad days. Yeah. But that's no excuse not to give the patient the best care. Right. And so we're on strive to make this the best hospital there is. Well, very good. Um, we're excited to have you in the area, and I know it's, it's a tremendous job you have, but uh, thank, we're thankful for the employees, uh, the physicians, and even the volunteers, because there are many volunteers. Wonderful. Yeah, who Over who 250 help. volunteers in the wow. hospital. And that's all ages, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we, we definitely um, are excited to have you in the Aiken area. I know that you have uh, children, school-age children, so uh, you'll be participating in a variety of, of school events. But uh, any last words for, for our viewers today? Well, again, thank you, Donna, for having me on. And, and I would just encourage everybody that um, you could come visit us um, at our website at www.akenregional.com and when you're there there's a place that you can send a request um, a C to the CEO and I'll be more than happy to respond. Very good. All right. Well, we wish Aiken Regional much success and as I said, we're happy to have you in this area. Um, we are certainly excited about Aiken Regional becoming a partner with us here uh, in Education Matters to spread the, the word about um, health care and what's available, the services that are available. And we just, you know, are excited about what the future holds for Aiken Regional. Any little insight into the future? <laughs> We are just plan on growing. All you know, right. we, we plan on um, not being content with where we are and you know, we are looking at bringing in new physicians okay. and uh, possibly new services. All right, well you heard it right here inside of Education Matters. Mr. Vance Reynolds, we thank you again for uh, coming on the broadcast. We know you've got a lot to do. You've got to help celebrate your wife on this great Mother's Day. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate you very much. No problem. To God be the glory for all the great things he has done. And uh, closing us out again, we want to wish you, those of you who are mothers, a very happy Mother's Day. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for your smiles and your prayers. Thanks for your love. My name is Donna Moore Westby, your host of Education Matters, where learning is living. Have a blessed day.